Hello and welcome everyone. This is the final portion of the IDSA guidelines on the management of gram negative infections. So strenotrophomonas martophilia, it is an aerobic gram negative bacillus. It is common in water environments. Now the virulence, it is less pathogenic compared to other nosocomial infections. Produces biofilms and various virulence factors. It affects vulnerable patients, that is lung diseases, hematological malignancies. The characteristic of the infection is that it is similar management challenge to the uh, carbapenem resistant Astrobacter bowmani infection. Unclear if it is a colonizer or it is a true pathogen. This is the common problem we face with these type of less pathogenic organisms which are present commonly but we are not very sure whether they are actually causing the infection or are just colonizing. And they are usually a part of a morally microbial infection. Significant morbidity and mortality in hematological malignancy is seen when we have this infection as bacteremia or pneumonia of, because of this organism. Antibiotic resistance, there are numerous genes and mutations, ineffective conventional beta lactams due to L1 metallobeta lactamase and L2 serine beta lactamase, intrinsic resistance to aminoglycosides. Multidrug efflux pump and SMQNR genes reducing the effectiveness of various antibiotics. Regarding antibiotic susceptibility test, test issues with the AST to determine strenotrophomonas maltophilia is a common problem. CLSI has established guidelines for seven agents, but concerns with reproducibility and effectiveness remain there. Now, challenges with polymyxin MICs and heteroresistance and the inability to use them as treatment can cause problems. Now coming to our first question, what is the role of trimethoprim sulfmethoxazole for the treatment of these infections? This is to be a preferred therapy in the combination that we are using. Trimethoprim sulfmethoxazole should be a component and at least until clinical improvement is observed. This approach is preferred. The Historically, the first line therapy, it has been the first line choice for management of these infections. Surveillance studies have shown 90% effectiveness against strenotrophomonas maltophilia. However, there is an increasing recognition of the resistance to this antibiotic. Now, clinical experience and effectiveness, extensive clinical experience with the drug is seen in treating these infections. There is a, though a lack of rigorous clinical data to sees effectiveness. Most of the data are not so statistically robust. Observational studies suggest similar outcome with trimethoprim, sulfmethoxazole and other agents, but they have their own limitations. Now the dosing and toxicity, no established PKPD index for efficacy or toxicity is known. Toxicity concerns especially at high doses that is nausea, hyperkalemia and possible nephrotoxicity. Suggested dose is 8 to 12 mg per kg of the trimethoprim component of the trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. So you have need to target around 12 mg per kg if you are dealing with infections in the ICU. No clear evidence supporting any particular dosage but obviously uh, in sick patients it is always better to go for higher dosage. Now recommendations are there despite the statistical limitations and uh, it is to be considered as a preferred treatment due to the long-standing usage and lack of clinical failure signals. When prescribing this, the additional second agent can be minocycline or tgcycline, cefidurocol or levofloxacin until clinical improvement. Now what is the role of tetracycline? Now it can be used as a part of combination therapy, high dose minocycline that is 200 mg of IV every uh, 12 hours is recommended as a part of combination therapy until there is a clinical improvement. Minocycline is preferred over TG cycline due to slightly more favorable in vitro data which is available with the CLSI breakpoints, the oral formulation available with minocycline and better side effect tolerability. Regarding the effectiveness and surveillance, tetracycline derivatives generally show low MICs against this and uh, bacteria. Minocycline and tigicycline are active against approximately 90% of the isolates. Now, minocycline has lower MICs and better target attainment compared to tigicycline. The clinical outcomes. Limited clinical outcome data are seen with both the tetracycline derivatives. Observational studies have shown no difference between 
either trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole or these tetracycline derivatives. A uh, study comparing standard dose uh, TG cycline with fluorocrinolone showed lower clinical cure and higher mortality with TG cycline. Now dosing. High dose regimens are recommended to treat this particular infection at higher doses that is 200 mg twice daily uh, IV of minocycline is considered to be adequate. Now the limitation of the tetracycline derivatives are they have rapid tissue distribution resulting in limited urine and serum concentrations. Not recommended for UTIs and advised only as a part of combination therapy for bloodstream infections. Side effects are nausea vomiting in 40% of the patients and regarding other tetracycline derivatives that is erbacycline and omdacycline they are not recommended due to limited in vitro data with strenotrophomonas. Now what is the role of cefidirocol? Again, it can be used as a part of the combination therapy and uh, regarding uh, high susceptibility in surveillance and it has been seen that almost all the isolates have always been uh, sensitive to cefidirocol. Now uh, these studies which have been conducted uh, were before the widespread use of cefidirocol so we cannot really uh, say for sure that this is the status right now. Now in vitro and animal models have shown that there is a high likelihood of attaining adequate target uh, concentration with cefidirocol. Potent activity demonstrated in neutropenic thigh and lung murine infection models. Now efficacy in vivo against strenotrophomonas correlates with in vitro efficacy under iron depleted conditions. Now limited clinical data is present especially with carbapenem resistant infections and uh, all patients in this subset were treated with severterocol with 4 out of the 5 patients dying. Now additional clinical data is uh, limited up other than case reports. So the panel suggests despite limited clinical data the in vitro and animal models support the usage of severterocol. The decision to use severterocol as a therapy in combination or monotherapy is not guided based on the available data. Now the panel suggests considering cefidirocol as a component of the combination therapy until you see clinical improvement. Now what is the role of fluoroquinolones? Now they should be a part of the combination therapy especially levofloxacin. Transition to levofloxacin monotherapy is not advised. Resistance concerns. Now strenotrophomonas isolates often harbor the SMQNR resistance gene determining the increased fluoroquinolol MICs. Overexpression of these efflux bands can increase the fluoroquinolol MICs. Baseline susceptibility percentage to fluoroquinolol vary, vary widely in surveillance studies. In vitro and uh, animal models. Time kill curves suggest fluoroquinolol are inadequate to sustainably inhibit the strenotrophomonas growth. Uh, PKPD models of uh, monotherapy may not achieve target concentrations. Mouse models have shown effectiveness of levofloxacin and moxifloxacin against hemorrhagic strenotrophomonas maltophilia pneumonia. Regarding the clinical data, uh, meta-analysis comparing fluoroquinolone and trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole has shown marginal significance in protecting against mortality. Other observational studies have limitation and show mixed outcomes. There is a concern about the emergence of resistance during therapy with fluoroquinolones. Panel's recommendation is due to suboptimal results with monotherapy, it is always to be used as a part of combination therapy. And levofloxacin is to be preferred over Cipro or Moxie. And potential adverse effects, that is, the, uh, or the emergence of the resistance, should be considered while prescribing levofloxacin. Now, what is the role of septazidim avibactam astronam in these cases? Now use in specific condition is combination is recommended for infection in cases of critical illness or when there is intolerance or effectiveness of other agents. Now the mechanism of action is already known. The avibactam mainly acts by targeting the L1 and L2 beta lactamases intrinsic to strenotrophomonas maltophilia. The L1 metallobeta lactamases hydrolyze the septazidim but they cannot hydrolyze the astrionam. Now L2 is hydrolyzes both septazidim and astronam but is inactivated by the avibactam. Now this allows astronam to reach its target PPVs in strenotrophomonas maltophilia. Now the clinical data. There is a limited clinical data for use in this combination in strenotrophomonas infections. Despite the limited data, it is considered a reasonable treatment for severe infections, especially pneumonias and bloodstream infections. Now, what is the role of ceftazidime as such? 
Now it is not recommended for treatment and the recommendation is to use it with a beta lactamase if at all you are trying to use septazidim. Now issues with susceptibility testing is that although 30 to 40 percent of the standard of maltophilia isolates may test susceptible to septazidim, this is likely not indicative of clinical success. The accuracy and reproducibility of this MIC is questionable potentially due to the presence of the inactivating beta lactamases. So what is the general approach finally to treat this infection? So we should go for a combination therapy with two active agents. You should include trimethoprim self-methoxazole. Apart from that, you can include any one, minocycline, tigicycline, cefidirocol or levofloxacin. Try to avoid the cefidirocol because it is a reserved drug. Now when to use? Use it when until there is a clinical improvement. Once there is a clinical improvement, you can stop any one of the agent. But do not use levofloxacin as a one agent which will continue. If you have to stop any one agent, that agent has to be levofloxacin. Now the rationale is based on the clinical data as I have already presented. Regarding the use of septazidim avibactam astionam, it can be used in severe cases where you see clinical failure with the above agents or there is intolerance to the above agents. Now the rationale is based on the in vitro models which I have already described. Thank you for your patience. So in the next class we will give a summary of all the antibiotics and the dosage that is to be used in gram negative infections and uh, overall summary of the bacteria, the infection and the antibiotic dosage that is to be used. Thank you for your patience.